but they run on 12 volts. Now, DC current, which is basically a car battery. That is a car battery. Now, the car amps, literally, they have a positive and a negative, and those run wires usually around, I don't know, 4 gauge or so, pretty thick wires, run up to your car straight into the battery. And then there's another wire for the head unit that goes all the way up and plugs into your head unit. Now, the head unit controls when the amp turns on and off, and then the frequencies and stuff like that is sent to it. Now, that amp also has a crossover in it, usually. So, with that, you could you could get something like this, where you would kind of need it, or any kind of channel system. So, you could even have a two-channel system. And you could send all your frequencies into here, and then I'm pretty sure you could hook up the head unit, the cable to the head unit, from the car amplifier into here. And then that'll send out the signals to the amplifier and then the amplifier amplify it. But now the problem with that is that you can't plug a standard amplifier, car amplifier into a wall socket. Now the pro to that is that the amplifier gives out however many watts you want. So if you have a 1500 watt amplifier, it's going to put out 1500 watts to your subwoofer as long as your subwoofer is 1500 watts or 300 or whatever watts you have. But with the con with that is that you need to somehow figure out to get a 120 volt wall outlet AC current down to 12 volts DC current. So one of the ways people do that are lies in your computers, not laptops, desktops. So in your desktop computer, there's something called a PSU. And that stands for power, power supply unit. And what that does is that plugs into your wall and it converts 120 volts down to 12 volts DC current. And that usually plugs straight into the amplifier for the battery terminals. But the bad things with that is that you usually need two of them hooked up in series or parallel. I'm not sure about that. And there's also 10,000 different wires that come on one of them. So you need to bridge, or you don't need to bridge. You need to disconnect all the wires, figure out which wires carry the 12 volts, the two wires, hook them up in parallel and then or series, and then put them into the the amp so now that is the ideal system but you also don't want two PSUs running on the same outlet because that'll blow a fuse in your house or cause some other problems or your electric bill is going to be ridiculously high so the other way around that is to get what people have done now I personally hate this method and I think it should never be used what they did is get a battery charger uh, for a car battery and the battery charger puts out 12 volts at 2 to 8 amps or 10 amps and you can switch that and they just hook that straight up to the uh, the battery terminals from the terminals terminal whatever they're called on the charger and they ran it like that and that works but it also can fry your uh, your charger because as the power or the volume gets increased so it is the the power drawn and then the other thing what they did was this is a little cleaner method but they took a car battery and they just literally put a car battery in their house and fed the wires into that and just hooked it up that way now the bad thing with that is that the battery dies obviously so you need to charge it every now and then or every actually you need to charge it a lot with higher amps so really the best method that you can use is to use these two setups, which is one amp and two amps. Now, this amp doesn't have to be 750 watts. This could be a 100-watt dual channel. It could be whatever kind of home receiver that's called in the world. As long as it has one channel and it has a subwoofer pre-out, pre-out. And then what you can do is look for another amp, say some kind of radio or uh, like that, that has around 100 watts or so and it has auxiliary in these two things right here and then basically you plug your pre out into the auxiliary in and then change the setting on this so that way you go to the auxiliary and then just hook your subwoofers up to there that's the easiest best way to do it it's, it's a little pricey if you're doing that from start but for me it was actually very convenient because I had everything you see here I already owned except for this and the subwoofer 
those are the only two things I bought. I bought the Sobo for $40, $45, and I bought this for $45 with shipping. So it was a pretty darn good deal. So, um, this is the way I would recommend. I, I, this the cleanest way, and to me it's the best way. So, with that being said, I'll show you a little preview of how it sounds with one kicker, 300 watt. And there's also so many more settings you can control on this too, and stuff like that. And like this has bass boost and stuff like that that were originally to these speakers, because these speakers have tweets, mids, and subs, but they're all in line. So anyway, so I'll put this up to 35, and I'll show you what it sounds like. Can't hear it, sorry, but the camera sucks. So, there's a little preview. Now, through those two amps together, they're basically putting out around, I don't know, I'd say about probably 200 and 300 watts to that subwoofer. Because as you turn that volume up, it gets louder, obviously, and gets sent to this one, which this is already amplified, but it's also getting doubled because of the amplified power because of that, which is then getting put out to the subwoofer. So this subwoofer may be underpowered by 100 watts or 50 to 75 watts, whatever it is. But for a home system like this, it is well worth it. And you have different settings here. Like I could change this to uh, game mode, whatever, where it was. Because it's for its game right there. I could change it to stereo, direct, and a direct audio. It's basically no amplification, no enhancements. So the, here, here's direct audio, as you can see it sounds, it sucks, and then when you change it to the actual settings for all the amps, it sounds like that, and it's a lot better. So, I hope this video helped a lot, um, I have a lot of people asking me how I set it up and all this other stuff, sorry it's really long, but it's, it's a good explanation. Um, if, if you have any questions or anything like that, please ask. Uh, some good subwoofers I recommend are obviously kickers, because they're top of the line. And pretty much kickers. I mean, there's really good ones out there. But, uh, you know, you got, you got to find what you like and what, you know. Do reviews, go on forums, find good things. For amps, I really recommend the Pioneer ones like this for home amplifiers. Because they're really good and they usually are half decent. Uh, so, yeah. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, if you have any other questions or anything like that, just feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.